Welcome one and all to Padre Pio TV this weekend. And as always, I invite you to like and share this broadcast in the English language. And you're indeed welcome to like and share the other broadcasts too, to spread the good news, to spread the good word. This weekend, we have a very powerful, very profound message from Padre Pio. Uh, really does illustrate very powerfully his role as a priest and his top priority for the Mass and the sacraments. He says from Have a Good Day, Do not leave the altar without first shedding tears of sorrow and love for Jesus, crucified for your eternal salvation. Our Lady of Sorrows will keep you company and inspire you. The centre of Padre Pio's life was the Mass. It was the focal point of his day, and he rose from bed long before he offered Mass at 5am to prepare for this sacramental encounter with Jesus. Coupled with this, Mass is primarily a sacrifice, and so therefore Padre Pio, perhaps more than most priests, understood the power and the significance of this as he himself suffered for all his priestly life, especially with the wounds of Christ, the stigmata, on his hands, feet and side. On the altar and on the cross, Jesus himself offers his body, blood, soul and divinity through the action of the priest. And Padre Pio experienced this in a very profound way, in that he often shed tears while he offered Mass. Time stood still for Padre Pio when he arrived at the altar. We know that he had a privilege given to few other mortals, that of being able to see into the kingdom of heaven and to see and encounter our Divine Lord, our Blessed Lady and the Saints. However, it was on the altar at Mass that Padre Pio profoundly encountered the suffering Christ, more than perhaps any other time. And he united his own sufferings with Jesus in the Word and in the Eucharist. Here he took all his spiritual children in prayer, the sick, his brother friars, the Holy Father, the Church, the needs of the world for prosperity and peace, and of course the Holy Souls. Padre Pio intimately knew the power and the need of the Mass as the altar and the cross are the theatre of redemption. Jesus offered himself in the Eucharist at the Last Supper and died for us on the cross. After three days he rose from the dead. Padre Pio shed tears of sorrow and of love because of this, and one could say that he never stopped shedding tears of sorrow and love because he never left the altar. Mary, who stood at the foot of the cross as her son was dying, is also present at every Mass. Mary is always beside her son Jesus. Padre Pio was fortified by the Word and by the Eucharist every day, and in truth, he lived life in the friary, uh, and it was that life which was an extension of the Mass. So the Mass, like at the end of the Mass, the priest says, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, to love and glorify the Lord. For Padre, Mass spilled over to permeate his days and nights with the suffering Jesus. One of his sayings was... It is easier for the earth to exist without the sun than without the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Padre Pio lived the Mass and never came off the altar, and as I said, this spilled into his day. His encounters with people were profoundly sacramental in Holy Mass and in the Sacrament of Penance. As a Capuchin, Padre Pio was close in spirit to St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis and Padre Pio, although separated by 800 years, uh, were still so similar. They both bore the stigmata. They both suffered. And of course, they were both brothers, friars. Though not a priest, but a deacon, St. Francis nevertheless had a deep honour and respect for the Mass and the priesthood. And he admonished his priests, and all priests indeed, to realise the honour and the sacred duty a priest of Jesus Christ has. I close with two quotes, one from the Testament of St. Francis and the other 
a letter written by Francis to the entire order. Francis writes lots. If you would, at some stage, have a look at the writings of St. Francis. I suppose he's always associated with the peace prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me a channel of your peace. But there is so much richness in the writings of St. Francis. So the testament and then the letter of the entire order. And this is what he says in each about priests. Afterward, the Lord gave me and still gives me such faith in priests who live according to the manner of the Holy Roman Church because of their order, that if they were to persecute me, I would still have recourse to them. And if I possessed as much wisdom as Solomon, and I came upon pitiful priests of this world, I would not preach contrary to their will in the parishes in which they live. And I desire to respect, love and honour them and all others as my lords. And I do not want to consider any sin in them, because I discern the Son of God in them, and they are my lords. And I act this way because in the world I see nothing corporeally of the Most High Son of God except his most holy body and blood, which they receive and which they alone minister to others. And I want to have these most holy mysteries honoured and venerated above all things, and I want to reserve them in precious places. This from the letter to the entire order. See your dignity, friar priests, and be holy because he himself is holy. And just as beyond all others, on account of this ministry, the Lord God has honoured you. So even you are to love, revere, and honour him before all others. Great miseries and miserable infirmity when you hold him so near and you care for anything else in the world. Let the whole of mankind tremble with fear. Let the whole world begin to tremble and let heaven exult when there is upon the altar in the hand of the priest Christ, the Son of the living God. O admirable height and stupendous esteem, O sublime humility, O humble sublimity which the Lord of the universe, God and the Son of God, so humble himself, that for our salvation hides himself under the little form of bread. See, friars, the humility of God and pour out your hearts before him. Humble yourselves even, so that you may be exalted by him. Therefore, hold back nothing of yourselves for yourselves, so that he may receive you totally, because he gives himself totally to you. Do not leave the altar without first shedding tears of sorrow and love for Jesus, crucified for your eternal salvation. Our Lady of Sorrows will keep you company and inspire you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.